Hello, in this presentation I'm going to show you how to use RESA 2D to, to determine the mode shapes and modal frequencies of a shear building. This will be when we'll be doing the same shear buildings we used in Lesson 18. When you start up RESA you get this starting a model dialog. I'm going to go ahead and close that out and just to make sure we're all using the same version. This is the educational version. It is what used to be version 5.5 of RESA. Several years back you can see copyright 2001. Now, in order to set up the model, the first thing you want to do typically is to, to redo the grid so it'll be easy to put in the members. So I click here on Modify the Drawing Grid. And the columns were 14 feet high. And remember, there are three stories, so I can type in here 3 at 14. The width of the building doesn't really matter. I'm just going to type in 24 feet. Click OK. Now, in order to put the members in, we have to use the same parameters that we had before. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a, a section set. So, if you come over here to Data Entry, under Sections, these are the section sets. I'll put in the columns and the beams. And for the column, I it wasn't the, the area wasn't given. I'm going to go ahead and just guess 30 square inches. We were given the moment of inertia that's critical in determining the the frequency and mode shapes and that was 1200 inches to the fourth you can see the units are inches to the fourth let's just assume a square column so I've got 1200 inches to the fourth both ways now for the beams again I wasn't given much information except that they're very rigid so I'm gonna put in a hundred for the area and 10,000 for the moment of inertia note that the material here is steel so you can check to see the properties on that if you come over back to the data entry under general materials there's steel 29,000 KSI for the modulus of elasticity so that matches up with what we had before okay so now I have the column and beam shapes defined now I can come back to the model and I click on the draw new members button here I'll start off with the columns you can see it's selected to go here so I click OK and then I draw them in just kind of click on the click on the grid points there. When you when you when you're done with one row of columns, you can stop the drawing tool by right clicking or hitting escape. Then I draw the other columns in. Next, I'll draw the beams. So I click this again, change this to beams. Okay, and draw on the beams. I'm going to right click to pick it up. Now I want to check to see that I've entered everything correctly. Obviously this is a very simple model. I'm sure there aren't any mistakes here, but as you get to, as you develop more complicated models, you want to check to make sure everything's entered correctly. If you go up here towards the upper left hand side of the screen, there's this little button. It looks like a little almost like a little M in a computer monitor. It's the um, plot options dialog. You click on that. Then you select the members. And the labeling right now they're not the members aren't labeled, so I'm going to change that to section set. And I click OK. Now it shows me I've got the columns correctly defined, and here are the beams. Next, I want to put in the boundary conditions or the reactions. And remember, the base of the building is fixed, so this is the reactions button here. Click on that. I'm going to make this fixed. You apply it, and then you can draw a rectangle around the base there, and you can see that gives me a fixed connection. The next step is to enter the mass. Now, in RESA 2D, it, it's not necessarily too intuitive here, but the mass is entered as a point load or a joint load. And so it's this button here, Apply Joint Loads. I click on that, and you can see here that I can specify that this is a mass. You do want it to be in the x direction. And then the magnitude on that, we were using 2 kips second squared per foot in MathCAD when we did the original model. Now I've got two nodes per story, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a one here. And you can see it tells you what the units are. It's kip feet second for mass, which means that this will be one kip second squared per foot. When I apply that then, I'm going to draw a box around the nodes, node two and node six. Here's the second story. Here's the third story. Now unfortunately, you can't really see that there's mass there. There's no way to really display that. At least I haven't found one. But if you go to the basic load cases, 
you'll see that in this first basic load case here I have six joint loads if you click on that that will show you that at each of the nodes I have a mass and it's one and you can see the units up here kip second squared per foot for mass so that would give me two second two kip second squared per feet on each floor okay so now I have the masses defined the columns have the correct stiffness that's those are the most important things here then I go to the load combinations and there's nothing here in order to solve this I have to have a load combinations I'll call this just the default load combination now remember all those loads were in basic load case one so I put a one there and then I'm not going to factor this you know if you think about the load combination such as 1.2 times the dead or 1.6 times the live that's what this is for but really I'm just going to use just the loads I don't need to factor them so I'll put a one here exit out of this now I should be able to solve it when the solution choices come up you can see there is a dynamic analysis which is an eigen solution analysis so RISA 2D is using eigenvectors and eigenvalues to define the dynamic parameters. So we'll click on that. I'm going to solve it. It asks me how many modes do you want. And it automatically selects three. That's good. We have, we have three modes for the building. So I start my solution. And then what pops up are the frequencies and periods. Now this isn't quite right. If you look, so this is modes one, two, and three. Now this is a frequency in hertz. For the when we when we solve this in MathCAD, I did frequencies in radians per second, and the first mode was 14.468 radians per second. If you do the conversion on that, that's 2.30 hertz. So this is 1.956 hertz. So it's not quite right. It's a little the frequency is a little bit lower and the period is a little higher than what I got from before. One way to try to figure out what's going on and why there might be a discrepancy is to look at the mode shapes. So here is the mode shape for, for the first mode. And you can see it tells you mode shape 1, and there's the period. If you want to change that, you can come up here to the top here. There's mode shape 2. There's mode shape 3. But getting back to mode shape 1. Now one thing I note is that the mode shape has an X direction component, which is what I want. But it also has a Y direction component, which we really didn't assume that. In fact, one of the, one of the assumptions we make for shear building is that the columns don't don't stretch out they're inextensible and so these really should be zero and these rotations should be should be close to zero as well because the beams are so rigid that they don't allow the column to rotate so what I need to do is I need to go back into the materials okay, so I'll get rid of this here go back into the not the materials go back to the sections and we're gonna make these bigger so for the area I'm gonna make 10,000 square inches obviously that's not that's not realistic here. What I'm just doing is I'm just trying to stiffen up that area so that it's rigid. Next, I'll make the moment of inertia for the beam, I'll make it a million. So I can go 1E6. That's a million. 1E6 there. Okay. So now that should be very stiff. I should hopefully get no displacement in those columns when I look at the mode shapes. And then the rotations at the top and bottom of the columns it should be zero. Let's see how well that works out. Okay, so I go back in, I solve it, and it's selected already since I'd done that before the dynamic analysis. I solve, I start the solution, and sure enough that seemed to work. Remember it was 2.30 hertz, 2.30 hertz for MathCAD, and for RISA 2D it's 2.299, which is 2.30. So that winds up pretty pretty well as far as the first as far as the first mode goes. Um, it looks like I got rid of my the results panel. If you come up to the top here, you can click on this little R here. That brings it up. Now I can look at the mode shapes. Okay, so here is the mode shape in the X direction. Um, that doesn't look quite like what we had in MathCAD. I'll talk about that here in a minute. In fact, it looks very much different from what we had in MathCAD. But the thing I'm really looking at here is once I increase the area in the columns, now the mode shape in the y direction is zero. That's good. And then these rotations, they're not zero. It's going to be pretty hard to get them exactly zero, but they're very, very small. So I think this is probably this is probably going to be close enough, particularly since the frequency is so close. I think I've probably modeled this pretty well. Let's talk about this mode shape here. 
what I've done here is I have dis I'm displaying the mode shape from MathCAD. That's what we found back in lesson 18. And then I'm also displaying the mode shape from RISA 2D. And you can see they really don't look much alike. However, this, these are actually very similar and they're essentially the same mode shape, they're the same icon vector. And the reason for that is that you can, based on the definition of the eigenvalue and the eigenvector, any scalar multiple of an eigenvector is still an eigenvector, it still works. So if I take the MathCAD eigenvector and then I multiply by a scalar, and the scalar I've chosen is 0 0.802 over minus 0 0.328. And what that is basically is I took the first entry in the RISA mode shape and divided by the first entry in the MathCAD mode shape. If I do that, if I multiply that by all the entries in the vector, I get this. And of course the first one is exactly right because the way I scaled it, that's pretty much guaranteed. The next two are not quite right. 1.445 versus 1.448 and 1.802 versus 1.806, but you can see they are very, very close. And the difference is there, there's probably some round off. And also remember that we didn't truly have zero rotation at the nodes. Um, there was some small rotation in the mode shape, and so that could affect this slightly. But overall, the results look very, very good. They match up very well, and so I'm pretty confident that, I've, that I have modeled this building fairly accurately in RISA 2D in order to match up with the assumptions we made when we did the analysis in MathCAD.